Hey guys, welcome back. We are going to do something a little bit different here with the 75 DT250. Something I've been wanting to do for a while here. Uh, I want to take the bike back on the trails, do a ride along, and show you how capable these old bikes are. Now this one here is a 75 DT250B, and this one I picked up a few years ago. Uh, it was for 100 bucks. Didn't look like this when I got it. This one kind of kickstarted my addiction to these old bikes. Actually, I can't say that. It was actually the, the XL175 and XL350 that my friend Frank had. And uh, I ended up finding a couple of those bikes. And then uh, a friend of mine said that someone was selling this bike dirt cheap too, 100 bucks. So I, I jumped on it and fixed it up. And it's been such a good, reliable bike. I just kind of use it to cruise around the trails and stuff. And I, I'm really surprised at how capable this thing is back on the woods, uh, the woods that I ride. With my cross trainer, with my XR400, um, you know, it'll do pretty much everything except for, you know, the, the big log crossings. Um, I won't take it, I won't take and beat the heck out of this thing, but it, it will do a good bit of the trails. You know, it's not going to do the big hill climbs, um, big rocks and stuff that, uh, that are on those hills. Sometimes we'll, we'll throw it off track and I don't, I don't want to end up dropping it and break anything. So kind of just uh, cruising the normal trails with it and... Every once in a while, I'll get the inclination to go off and try something a little bit more tricky. And um, surprisingly enough, this bike will do it. So obviously there's gonna be some limitations. The The first the first big one is the suspension. Uh, I mean, look, you only have a few inches of travel front and back compared to the modern bikes with the Monoshock. Much more capable forks on the newer stuff. The uh, engine is air-cooled, so it's not gonna have the top end power of a modern bike. Surprisingly enough though, this thing's got plenty of torque. It probably can, can do for rings and maybe a uh, hone job, but uh, it runs pretty good. It's got a good power band to it and uh, it pulls good. So I'm gonna show you that in this video here shortly. So um, sit back guys, enjoy. I'll show you what these things can do. All right, here we go. I'm gonna show you how easy this thing starts. If any of you have been following my channel, you know how much I like these DTs. I've, I've had quite a few on there already, and I have a couple more in the pipeline. But um, this was the one that really opened my eyes to how cool these old vintage two-stroke dual sports are. Just so easy to work on, super reliable. The fact that you got the uh, oil injection here under the tank, or under the seat, uh, you, just drive up to the gas station, fill it up. Just make sure you got oil in there and you're good to go. So I want to show you, this is usually a one or two kick bike. One kick, most of the time. So I think I'm going to uh, start off with a variation of stuff, just some cruising trails. Uh, there'll be some rocks, creeks, roots, uh, some log crossings. Just kind of throw it all in there to show you still take these bikes on some uh, pretty decent trails. Here we go. Power band kicks in. You see that extra oomph. And it's this kind of stuff here that I notice the suspension most is on these real choppy little bumps and rocks and stuff. Kind of limits you a little bit. You got to slow down. But I'm sure with uh, you know back in the day they probably had aftermarket stuff that was. Uh, a little better than the stock 
suspension that can handle that a little better. And, you know, granted, these shocks are uh, pretty blown out. You know, if I had rebuilt stuff, it would probably handle that better, I'm sure. Notice I'm just kind of low RPM cruising through these uh, sections here, and uh, not really having to get into the power band too much. So keeping it, keeping the pipe low, it's nice and quiet, cruising through the woods. Again, you know, you got dual shocks and old blown out forks. You can't really expect much, but it does a pretty good job. I like guess here is kind of choppy, full of roots and rocks. You really gotta pick your line right. And I handled that pretty well. Also, going down these hills, I forgot to mention in my intro video uh, that the, uh, the brakes are both drums, of course, so they're, they're quite lacking compared to modern brakes, as you can imagine. Not bad, though. All right, let's hear the high speed straightaway. I'm going to see how this does. that pretty well. That's third gear power band up that straight. Real choppy rocks and roots. And she didn't do too bad. Obviously you gotta pick your line well with that but again surprisingly how well this bike can handle that. downhill see all the brakes hold up here rocky downhill that's a little sketchy If you don't pick your lines there, you can be in trouble. It helps too that I'm familiar with these trails, but uh, it handled it. Alright, this section here is nice and flowy. 
pretty smooth too, so it should be no problem. gonna drop down into some more technical stuff here and I uh, kind of get to see how this thing can handle some some creeks and logs and little vertical inclines and stuff like that so here we go like that you know I'm in first gear I don't even have to clutch it it just pulls right out with the, with the amount of torque it has you know you don't have to slip the clutch really here's a real rocky se section here see how this handles it it's not bad you just go slow enough to pick your lines and you're okay a little, little log jump there handle that pretty well single track through here. Definitely giving the suspension a workout. But it's taking it. There's a log cross up here. drop down into the creek a little more. Get real rocky down in here. You can hear the rocks bashing off the skid plate. But again, I'm going through here at a decent pace. I'm not trying to kill the bike. I'm not crawling too much either. But she's taking it. I'm 
just cruising in third gear right now. Here, I'll probably take it easy through here a little bit. It's some sharp rocks. That's the other thing that's nice about this. I mean, you can cruise at like idle pace and not foul plug or anything. It goes over these rocks. And then you come right back up, you got power band right there. main route uh, that I'm riding on has been around for quite a while. I know um, there's guys that have ridden these trails since the early 70s, maybe late 60s too. I've seen trees back here like this one here that's got carvings in it um, from the late 60s. There's another one that I'm going to see if I can find it again that I've seen that uh, has like 1969, 1970 carved into it. So uh, yeah, these trails have been around quite a while and these are the kind of bikes that would have been on here at that point. All right, well, so far so good. She's handling everything with ease for the most part. Um, it's not too muddy back here today. Uh, we've had quite a bit of dry weather and a little bit of rain to keep the dust down, which is nice. But uh, this one is equipped with the uh, full-on motocross knobbies on here, as you can see, so that's helping. So it might be a different story if I was running the uh, trousy type tires that are usually on these bikes for uh, dual-purpose tires. So uh, I think the knobs are helping and we're not, we don't have too much mud on there, as you can see, even going through those creeks and stuff. It's really not muddy. So I think what I'll do next is maybe try some more technical stuff. Maybe find a couple logs to try to go over. We did do that one that was pretty decent size with ease. So I'm going to try to find some more, more challenging stuff. Let's see what we can find. So this section I'm going to try is a new, some new stuff we just put in. And uh, it's a little tight off camber, some logs to cross. Let's see how she does. Hopefully I don't break anything. This is a big one here. Need momentum. Oh yeah. Going along here at first, it's off camper pretty good. Yeah. This wasn't bad. Another one up here. A little tug on the bars. Give it some gas. Front tire comes up a little bit, that's all you need. Another big one up here. Ooh. Yeah. I hit the shifter on that one. We bent that and the peg. That's not good. Yeah, it's a big rock.
Nope, here's the first bit of carnage from that last section there with the big rocks. It bent this in almost 90 degrees and the uh, peg took a hit. And you probably notice this is a this is not a Yamaha peg. Somebody had welded this onto the frame when the original peg spot right here was cut. Either cut off or broke or something. But they welded this on and I just bent the crap out of that. So let's see if I can got something in my tool bag I could bend at least the shifter back for now. As you can see I didn't have much luck bending anything, so I'm just gonna ride this out. Just kind of take it real easy through the real rocky stuff and make sure I don't mess this up anymore. So I've got a little bit more left on this loop. I'm not gonna do the entire thing because it does get pretty uh, pretty tough in some spots and I'm, I don't want to beat this up too much. So uh, we're gonna do one last section and head back. I'll give you my final thoughts. This here is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to get on the gas hard here. I don't know if it's going to be able to make it without me clutching it, but we're going to try. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it don't break nothing. Wow. First gear, no clutch. Just powered right up it. up here to cross, medium size. Now this stuff here could be pretty tricky, right here. See how she handles this. camera on the side of a hill. If this was wet, it'd be a different story. Luckily, it's dry today. Powers right through it. All right. Again, I'm gonna kind of slither through here. Tricky hill climb out of here. First gear, and it approaches real slow. A 
lot of big roots on it. Well guys, there you have it. I think I've shown that these bikes are still quite capable of some pretty good trail riding. Uh, aside from some limitations like ground clearance, as you've seen me smash up the uh, shifter and the peg, and also the suspension clearance, travel, I should say. Um, really, those are the biggest limitations for these, these classic bikes. You plan on taking them in the woods, which uh, they're still quite capable, as I've shown. And the best part being is you can jump right off the trail onto the road, head home, get gas, whatever you need to do. Don't need a truck to take this bike back here. Uh, just ride it right down the road, hit the trailhead, and you got miles and miles of trails to ride. I'd say it's about 75% of the stuff I'd do on the other bikes. And, uh, you know, I probably probably could try some of it on there on this bike, but I'm just afraid of breaking stuff. I'm going to leave it off there for now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, there's only a few bikes, I'd, uh, classic bikes that I have that I would take back in the woods. And um, this is one of them because it's not perfect. It's a good rider and that's got the knobbies on it already. So I'd consider bringing more back if, uh, if you guys want to see, see that kind of stuff with limitations. I don't want to beat it up too bad. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.